Well, good morning, everybody. Do, do please sit down for a moment. We'll get this right one day. It wasn't even 10 o'clock. It's only just gone 10 o'clock now. We'll work it out. We'll work it out. Good morning. It is a joy to welcome all of you. I am going to sit down. Now, you have all sat down. And uh, this morning, Catherine is going to lead us in our worship. I always say here, don't I, that we don't take ourselves too seriously. We take what we do seriously, but then we don't worry if things don't quite go according to plan, because then if it ever did, we'd wonder what was going on, wouldn't we? If it all worked out perfectly well, you'd think there'd been a body swap somehow, wouldn't you? But we are here to worship together, uh, and so I'm going to hand over to Catherine to lead us this morning. Good morning. Good morning to everybody who's joining us online. Do you know, today is a special day for St John's. There are a few of us who know already why it is a special day. Judith is nodding. We are on the diocesan prayers. Today is the day. It happens around about once a year, a bit less than once a year, a bit more often than once a year, but not quite as often as once every six months. We are the, the parish which is prayed for in the whole diocese, the Diocese of Blackburn, and they read our names out at the cathedral and they pray for St John's Little Thornton. So that is wonderful. So if your day goes super wonderfully and you feel the presence of God with you all day, perhaps it is because we are being prayed for, especially today, although you are always prayed for by us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's stand, if you're comfortably able, to sing our first hymn. You're the, the word of God the Father.
In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and bring you to eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As the redeemed people of God, we stand to say the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God. The first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 12 to 19. Peter addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But he rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of you, all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us 
that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not love us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what will be be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. This is the word of the Lord. If you're comfortably able, please stand to sing our gradual hymn, Before the Throne of God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. 
When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they, were st they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written, the Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I want to start today with our Gospel reading that you've just heard Becky bring to us. It begins in a rather puzzling way. It said, Why they, while they were still talking about this, this. But what? What were they talking about? The lectionary, the way that the readings we have every week are chosen and divided up, has chopped off the meaning of this phrase. So let's see. Go back a verse or two and make sense of it. The bit before this account is the road to Emmaus. The two who had this experience rushed back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples. Imagine the scene. Breathlessly they arrive and they hurriedly tell what happened. Well, we were walking along and there was this man and he was talking to us, but we didn't recognise him. But he told us and explained to us everything about the scriptures and about Jesus. The other one might interrupt. My heart was burning when I heard. And then they might continue. So we invited him in. We broke bread and then, oh my goodness, you will never guess what. It was Jesus. I can't believe it. I didn't recognise him before. And then he disappeared. Just like that. And we have rushed back to tell you. The women were right. Peter was right. He is risen. Wow. This is what our first sentence was referring to. This is what the disciples were talking about and what a conversation it must have been. I expect Peter said, I told you so. If the women were there, maybe they smiled and nodded to each other in a, well, now they get it kind of way. Who stepped forward, I wonder, to give Peter that, to give Jesus that piece of fish? I think, I hope it was Thomas, wanting physical proof, being brave, but questioning. I imagine Matthew nodding and writing as Jesus said, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Imagine the look on John's face as Jesus opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. A look of realization that light bulb moment, expression on a face that teachers long for when they're teaching for their students, when everything comes together and falls into place. And at the end of our gospel reading, you get, well, more, more than that. Jesus told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these teachings. Repentance for forgiveness of sins will be preached everywhere. Jesus is saying that because of his death and resurrection, sin and death have been defeated everywhere. And this news is to be preached and witnessed, proclaimed to 
everywhere. Just like it says at the beginning of Acts, chapter 1, verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The ends of the earth. Everywhere. And then we think about our first reading that Ginny brought us this morning. That comes from Acts as well. Chapter 2. Chapter 3, rather. Chapter 3. We're just a little bit further along than that Acts chapter 1 verse that I just gave you. The time just after Easter and Pentecost, when the early disciples are working out what their new life will look like, what being filled with the Holy Spirit means for them, and how being witnesses to the risen Lord, preaching in his name, actually plays out in everyday life. Let's read the first. And then the priests and 
Pharisees come up to Peter and John and seize him, seize them and put them in jail. Acts 4, the very next chapter, is what Peter says to Annas and Caiaphas and the others in the city of Sanhedrin, the Jewish human body, when they are questioned. Remember those names, Caiaphas. They even see them said Jesus to Pilate and ultimately to his death. Peter, our fisherman Peter, the wobbly, sometimes prayed for a bit and then the fear comes over. That's Peter. I get up to what? The self doubt. The no, not me. The I can't. That is, is that man speaking so clearly, so courageously, with authority. Read Acts 3 and 4 for yourself this week, and you'll get the whole speech from a fisherman, an ordinary chap, doing extraordinary things because of Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit. It says that in Acts chapter 4, verse 8. So how about us? You and me. We are called as well, just like people to speak and do things because and through the power of Jesus. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we are called to step out into the world, just like Peter did, preaching and witnessing everywhere, to the ends of the earth. Ordinary people doing extraordinary things. God didn't call Peter because he was an amazing speaker. A learned scholar, someone extraordinary and super shiny. No, not at all. God didn't look on the application form, on the skill list, and go, tick, yes, yes, tick, tick. This is the one. No, he equipped Peter along the way. There's a saying, maybe you've heard it before. God wasn't called the equipped. He equipped the call. <coughs> he doesn't call you because you fulfill certain skill criteria. He calls you because your heart is open. Because he wants you just the way you are, right now. Peter was like us, bobbly. Sometimes brave for a bit, but then the fear comes over. Self-doubting and willing. Open to God's transforming power. How can you and I be open to this? Well, you might be sat here now thinking, I know what God's prompted me to do. I know who he wants me to speak to, what he wants to step up, me to step out into in his name. I know. And you're just another company, Catherine. Oh, I know. Or maybe you don't. Perhaps you are sitting here thinking, I wish. How can we be to God? Well, reading scripture. The word of God is a good place to start. Prayerfully reading and thinking over what God is saying to you. What are you putting on your heart? If this seems like a difficult task for you, you can help. Next week, four groups are starting a study of Romans. Ten weeks, the book of Romans in the Bible, not the Romans. It's just a minute time to get a primary school history project. <laughs> We're starting a course on the book of Romans. Ten weeks. And there are groups in the daytime and in the evening, and they would all be happy to welcome you. As a video and a discussion. Low key, laid back. No one bothers if you don't come over to me and you don't get it right. If you don't want to say much, or really anything, you are amongst friends. Friends who are looking to respond to the call of God. To hear and say, Wobbly, sometimes break through a bit, 
And then the fear comes over. People like Peter, who is Jesus in charge, the power of the Holy Spirit can and do the extraordinary things. Let us pray to the Father through the Son, who is close to us now and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the risen Christ was made known in the breaking of the bread, give grace to all Christian people through the holy communion of his body and his blood. Forgive us when we fail to come to his table, seeking our own desires instead. We thank you that his table is open to all, to all whose hearts are open and who freely come. Father, today we ask that our hearts be open to receive of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for peace. We pray for peace throughout this world. We bring before you the people in the nations around the world that suffer violence on a daily basis. We think especially of the people in Ukraine, in Myanmar, in Syria, Gaza, Lord, we pray that there will be an end to hostilities. We pray that simple things that we take for granted, food and water and shelter, will be made available to all. We pray that people will not live in fear. Fear that they may not live to see the end of the day, but instead to know your peace. We pray, Lord, for the aid agencies, for those who help in many ways, many ways that go unnoticed. And we pray that you will stir our hearts, that we will help in ways that we can, whether it be through prayer, through finances, through support in many different ways. Make our hearts restless, Lord, until there is peace throughout this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who feel a call on their lives, whether that be for ourselves, 
or other people that are known to us. For the many who sense that call of God to serve in so many ways. We pray, Lord, that again, hearts will be restless until they find their peace in knowing your will for their life. And Lord, as we come before you today, we open ourselves to your prompting that we may follow in the footsteps that you set before us, that your word will be a light unto our path. Lord, may we hear your voice clearly. May we know beyond all doubt and give us the courage and the boldness to step forward in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our diocese here in Blackburn. We pray for our bishops, Philip and Jill. We pray that you will give them all that they need to strengthen and support and sustain them as they lead our diocese in mission and service and love for you. We pray that there will be a real unity amongst churches, even where different positions are held. Father, we pray that your love will bind us together. We pray that each of us will play our part in showing your love, in declaring your love and speaking out in faith that more may be drawn to you. Father, we ask that you'll always remind us of that sense of calling that we have. That sense to know that there is a deeper desire to know and love you more. Give us that yearning that others may want to come to know of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, that you'll have mercy on those who cannot grasp the reality of your love for them. For those who have been told that they are not worthy. Father, as you called your disciples, sometimes wobbly, sometimes not able to do the things that they thought they could, and yet you gave them strength. We pray that you'll give confidence to those who are constrained by doubt and fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks for those who have held their faith through the trials of this world and have received their salvation, resting in the peace where all wounds are healed and all doubts dispelled. Today, especially, we remember Janet Townsend, who died earlier this week. We pray that you will be with her husband, Simon, and all Janet's family. And we remember those whose anniversary of their death falls at this time. We remember Mary Humphrey, Christine Adams Dawson, Sir Walter Clegg, Rose Payne, John Mashida, Elizabeth Buckley Vale, Peter Lawrence Bevan, Alan McDougall, and Janet Elizabeth Bramall. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray that God may pardon our doubts and imperfections in these and all our prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
If you're comfortably able, please stand to share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among us and his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And and also also with you. Let's share the peace with each other. which have been given, may they be used in glory of your service, in Jesus' name. Amen. Be present, be present, Lord Jesus, our risen High Priest, and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Almighty and Eternal Father, and in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Lord, has conquered the powers of death and hell, and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise, and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so in the joy of this Passover, Earth and heaven resound with gladness, 
while angels and archangels and all the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup of wine. Again, he gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St John and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And so let us join our prayers together as with boldness and confidence we pray the prayer as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Not because you're strong, but because you're weak, maybe a little wobbly. Come, not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loves you and he gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ, for we are his body.
Let us pray. Living God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Together, let's say, Lord, we have broken your bread and received your life. By the power of your Spirit, keep us always in your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And our diocesan vision prayer. Heavenly Father, we embrace your call for us to make disciples, to be witnesses, to grow leaders, and inspire children and young people. Give us eyes to see your vision, ears to hear the prompting of your Spirit, and courage to follow in the footsteps of your Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, you're back. You're going to come and tell us what you were up to. It does look very exciting, doesn't it? There was Play-Doh involved. There was Play-Doh and Ooh. food. I know, oh. food. Oh, we watched Is It Cake? We watched Is It Cake? I don't know if you're familiar with Is It Cake? It's a series on, on the Netflix. And, you know, not. But yes, it's, um, and they have these four p items on four podiums, and you've got to identify which one is the cake and which one's not cake. So some very, very skilled bakers in this world. But it is linked to Jesus and the resurrection, of course. And the fact is that Jesus, when, it, when he appeared and there were people that didn't believe because they weren't seeing, he took the people aside and he, and he, and he shared food with them to share that belief in Jesus' resurrection. So then the children decided upon creating a meal that they'd like to share with Jesus if they had that um, option. So would you like to tell Vivian what you made? Blueberries, oh. banana, blueberries, banana, watermelon, strawberries, and an apple. Ooh, a fine strawberry. Um, uh, um, uh, this is a tomato and a uh, um, uh, apple and some blueberries. Very healthy. I was very impressed. Okay. But we did then talk about cake, of course, and birthday cake. So it was rather fun. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Don't forget. Oh, yes, show the choir. Well, weren't they brilliant? And I know in that reading that we had where it said about that they gave Jesus some broiled fish, and I do remember as a child being taken up with the, oh my goodness, if I want to be like Jesus, do I have to eat broiled fish? <laughs> <laughs> so it's okay, guys, you know, blueberries, cake. <laughs> is it you now? Is it me now? <laughs> Let's stand to sing Lord of the Dance.
make us all hold the note at the end, Colin. I was doing my best. I was doing my best for every verse. The choir weren't with me then. Some tried it, some didn't. I was watching you, Colin. It's, I was watching. I was watching. What, uh, what a joy to be able to share that together. Let's invite God's blessing upon us. You might just want to bow your heads as I pray. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.